Old Boy Alberta was a miscellaneous oddball sausage factory that makes all different kinds of specialty sausages from poly sausage to pepperoni to beef jerky to pastrami to Danish ham, all different types of products we make and package. When my dad had the place, uh, there were only about two people working there plus my dad and they only made a few items and they sold strictly to Italian grocery stores. My dad came over in 1918 and we started the salami factory here in Seattle. And uh, I think if he was here today and saw what we had, he'd be amazed because he'd give me up for a lost cause ever being a sausage maker. All I want to do is buy woodworking tools and uh, build things. So I think he'd be very, very surprised if he saw what we put together as far as a sausage, a little sausage kingdom that we put together here. Professionals. We aren't weekend warriors anymore. I don't know when that helicopter boat will show up. But the boat to this side is the Old Boy Alberto. That boat was built and designed at the end of the 1981 season after Bill Muncy was killed in Acapulco. We're going to go out and bite him. So. Oh, just running the lines, making sure the fitting didn't get put on and not tightened. If you find something like that, you can really run into problems. Yeah, that's uh, oil pan screen filters to collect any foreign uh, metal or pieces of material that go through the motor before it goes through the oil pump. Well, to explain, you know, what it's like to drive a race boat, it is almost it's almost impossible. It's like the biggest thrill that you can ever imagine you can have. And I do it on a, a per se, a daily basis. And that's kind of, I guess you could explain this all, most of the drivers here as adrenaline jockeys because it's just a rush to drive one. Race day is really a big pump. You have to pay extreme, extreme attention to what you're doing. I think everything pretty much narrows down to one small fine focus of what you're doing. You think of nothing else. That's why I basically, I just strictly drive the boat. And I don't crew on it, I don't do anything. I, my job is to drive the boat and I take all my energies, focus them down to the one basic little thing and that is to drive the boat. Well, some days I get butterflies, some days I don't. I, when I was first driving, I used to get really wound up and you know, I didn't get to the point where some people get almost nauseous and sick. I don't have that problem, but I, I get pre-race butterflies sometimes. And once I get down in the boat and it's time to race, uh, all the butterflies go totally away. It was just sort of an evolution. You know, we got into it, we've been trying to get out of it for for 14 years now, and every year we end up, you know, uh, sponsoring it all over again. I think the momentum just got all sort of kept on going. It was just like a tidal wave, and it just uh, went year after year after year. Because every time we talk about getting out, everybody's all raring and roaring to go again, and we're back in it again. And that's pretty much the way we've stayed in it. Every year we're trying to get out of it, and every year we keep getting in deeper and deeper and deeper all the time. You know, we're trying just as hard with what we've got, and we just haven't quite got the horsepower and the speed that determined boats do have. 
there's absolutely no way that you can beat the big dollars and be competitive on the race course. It takes cubic dollars to win races. And it, it uh, uh, only has been the last uh, few years that uh, uh, the Alberto Sausage Company has found it possible to support a team such as they have today, which is a great racing team. You know, we had a better year last year than we did this year. We came in third nationally. We won two races. So there's, you know, that's not a that's not a shabby performance when you when you look around at some of the com competition that we face. It's a good feeling because you got a boat out here that's getting uh, exposure net there, right along with these guys that are spending a million and a half dollars on the boat, and we're not spending anywhere near that amount of boats. So we're probably getting more for our money than they are. You know, you could have all the money in the world basically out there and not do well and not enjoy yourself. And Art Alberto, whether we're spending a lot of money or a little money, always makes it makes it fun. There's a certain rhythm that you develop, like you do in any kind of a team, that uh, makes it work. That's why we, you know, have accomplished what we've accomplished in the three years. There's been an awful lot of hours put into the boat. It's it's a family flavored team along with working well together we've got a lot of a lot of uh, you know sons and daughters and wives and whatnot that are in and around and they help make it happen too jumping in with the Albertos was just was fantastic I just enjoy racing with them it's just I can't explain how nice it is to have the Alberto family there helping you out rooting you on all the way it's a very family sort of atmosphere with the Albertos looking after us very well we're trying to perform for our sponsor, and, and the Albertos are just super understanding as far as our failures. They know the frustrations that we're experiencing. It's like a family, and the Albertos are part of the family. We work together so closely, and they take care of us. We've got fruit and Gatorade and things when we need it. Well, it's just something that I do myself. It's, I don't think any other team does this. There's no other team that I know that feeds, makes sure that uh, there's enough Gatorade in the ice chest. There's no other team. It's just, maybe it's the family, maybe it's the mom in me. Dorsey and Art got lunch for us. I don't care what it is. They, all they do is hand out, hand out, hand out. I bet they use about two or three hundred salamis a day. I don't know how many bread. I've bawled them out so many times for that. But why? No, no. they're just too good hearted. I don't care who it is. If somebody was working late and they were hungry, well, Dorothy would always come in the bus and they'd stick their head in the door. So Dorothy would tell them, hey, you guys hungry? I'll make you a platter of cold cuts or I'll make you some sandwiches or get some pepperoni or jerky. Too busy. How would you like to make four or five hundred sandwiches a day? <laughs> you think it'd be fun? And then she laughs about it. And that makes me angry. <laughs> That's it. So I think that my granddaughter and my daughter-in-law, Kim, are probably are going to be the next uh, moms in the boat racing. I've watched Dorothy Alberto make sandwiches for the crew for quite a few years now. She pretty much has passed the baton on to me. When I came into the Alberto family, I thought that these guys were all bonkers on hydroplanes and just crazy about it. And now I've kind of become the crazy fan and my husband sits back and kind of is the spectator and I've become the person who I've got kind of a program. 9 to 10, I pass out things on the beach and 11 to 10, I mean 10 to 11 is when I make my sandwiches and my crew stuff so I'm able to be with the crew when the boat goes out. A lot of fun. Every year is the last year for the Alberto company, family, hydro. Every year is the last year, but somehow every year it seems like we're back. This is a picture of Patricia Ciotta holding a mock-up of a big salami, Art Alberto and Larry Alberto and the neighborhood kids, and we were christening the super salami. We have a picture of the U-8, our boat in action. Of course, in those days it didn't it didn't really go around too much. Just for it to start was a happening. 
we, we got started in boat racing because of Bill Worcester. 1975, in the spring of the year, KIO Television had a telethon to save the seafarer races, and uh, I saw Art there. We brought our boat down and had it on display, and I, I met Art at the telethon, and we discussed uh, at length the possibilities of having them to, uh, sponsor our boat. We told him, hey, there's no way we can afford a hydroplane. He says, I'll give you a deal you can't refuse. We had a no run, no pay deal. <laughs> he supported my team for seven years. And every year we try telling Bill Worcester, Bill, you got to get a sponsor that can afford to, you know, they can afford to be a sponsor and uh, get a boat that's going to run. And every year we try to get a sponsor for him, and every year the last minute he'd come along, we'd sponsor him again. I felt that we had to give the Alberto Sausage Company as much exposure as we possibly can give him. Knowing that we didn't have a boat that could win the races, uh, we tried everything that we could to, to try to do a good job for them. We always got a lot of exposure out of the boat because we always had a gimmick. Like one year we had uh, an all-girl uh, you know, crew. So we decided to go ahead, since it was an all-girl crew, to paint the engines hot pink and lavender so there'd be something different and they would stand out. In addition to that, I also designed the uniforms that we also wore as far as jumpsuits, and they were also hot pink and lavender. And hey, they're probably lucky if they even knew what a piston was at that time. But they came down here and then Bill Worcester knew a little bit about it and so he was sort of their leader and he had all these guys who were working and they worked their heart out and they were serious and devoted and determined but uh, in all truthfulness they really did know a lot of what they were doing. And that's why the boat, you know, never ran. The old boy Alberto is now going fast enough in the back suit to appear that she couldn't make a hundred mile an hour lap if she had to. Isn't it strange how competition brings the best out in you? Yes. Everyone in the pits came to see, number one, what the engines looked like, what the uniforms looked like. My gosh, there was a girl. They get their fingers dirty. They're in there working. Everybody was, hey, man. And, the, and really, there was a lot of support, a tremendous amount of support at any race we went to. And we were never, ever really given a, uh, shall we say, a cold shoulder or a brush by, that it was well received and, in fact, highly complimented that we were able to learn. Out there, as dead in the water, goes the old boy Alberto. Somebody pulled the salami, and there she sits. Bill Worcester, the owner Another of year we had a driver, her name was Pat Fiotta. We were gonna have the first woman driver, and we made an effort to do this. Well, this is the first time any, any woman even tried to drive a boat. She never did ever officially drive it, but she went out a couple times, you know, with someone else, you know, to try and get the feel of it. And finally, her kids told her, hey, mom, you know, we got one mom, forget it. You're not going to go drive a boat. You know, you're going to break your neck out there. And I think she went, Phew, when they told her she, you know, she they didn't want her to drive the boat anymore. Fred Leland built us a boat in six weeks. And this is a picture of the Fred Leland boat from start to finish in six weeks. He even built the trailer for it. This is just part of history. I don't know what else there is. Yes, biggest Alberto venture of them all. We went on a caravan down to Acapulco. Yeah, better. And that was quite an adventure because it was a caravan of nine boats, two motorhomes, two vans and no one knew what they were doing because no one except the Obertos had ever driven on a Mexican road. The trip to Mexico in 1981 was really an adventure to say the least. I mean, we had everything from getting the boat stuck in the mud in, in Acapulco over there. Uh, we got to the pits there in, uh, no, we got stuck in the mud in Mazatlan. down here they tried to put the boats in the water the water wasn't deep enough they had to fill the thing out there's no power no water no anything and as you'll see there's pigs walking through the pits
things were really always loose in Mexico. I mean, but when the race was all over with, it really all fit together really good, and the Mexican officials supplied us with everything that we needed other than the helicopters. We had an airplane here that took Bill Munson to the airport to the hospital, but uh, he had already, I'm sure, was dead by before they ever got him to the hospital. Yeah, in 1988, George Woods was out testing just before a storm in Miami, and uh, just as he was coming along to make his uh, qualifying run, the lightning struck and just barely missed the tail of the boat. And uh, that's probably once in a lifetime that something like that would happen. Just to sit and watch the boat races or to win a race, to me, doesn't mean anything. I mean, getting exposure, getting recognition, getting, you know, name recognition, and, uh, the potential getting more business, that's the thing that really keeps me going. You know, that and the kids and the family and everybody else that wants to keep the thing going. Oh, I don't know, it's just lots of fun having a boat and being the little kid with the slow boat and being able to hand out jerky and smoke running to fans and everyone. Yeah, I, I suppose we were kind of the laughing boat, you know. If I got qualified, it was a big event. Probably the best thing is we've gotten down into pits here and we've gotten to, to you know, know a lot of people. We've gotten a lot of kids into the neighborhood, you know, into the pits and that there. And, uh, and I think that's probably the main thing. I've been coming here every year for approximately 17 years. I first got involved with the Albertos um, through Larry, Art's son, and uh, we used to make hydroplanes like the large ones and run around in a oval on the grass with them. And then I got to know the family and Art Albertos enabled a lot of the kids in the neighborhood to just come down to their house and see the boats from a distance and then if you like to get involved in them, he can come down to the pits and he'll try it some way <laughs> through security or some way and try to get us involved and get us inside and then we all hover around the bus and slowly slip through <laughs> security or some way and try to get into the pits and see the boats up close and personal and you can go back you can look at the engines go in the truck and see what it's all about because if you're interested Mr. Roberto will find out and he'll get you involved. Really I think one of the main reasons we put the race on is it got all the neighborhood kids involved in it and they all got enthused. Uh, Tay, you know, we've been in this hydroplane deal for years and years and years, but I think our granddaughter here, Cindy Alberta, who's our oldest granddaughter here, is really the expert. And if you really want to go see what's going on in the pits over here, she'd be the one to take you around, and she can tell you more about the hydroplanes than I've even forgotten. Circus, circus. Well, I've been going to races since I was two, and in a way, yes, I think I do know too much for a ten-year-old. Our family knows a lot, but like my grandpa, he sometimes forgets a lot of stuff. So long ago. Alberto's having a little bit of propeller and engine problems, but we're hanging in there pretty well. Budweiser's doing exceptionally well. They've got the new driver, Tommy Deeds, who's doing a good job. Um, the U3 Cooper's Express won the Tri-Cities race, an unexpected winner, so they're doing really well. Tell me all about it. Okay. The sponson is the front end that, I don't know what it does. Um, it's just like the front of a car. It keeps it, if the sponsons get a little out of the water and it can cause it to flip if you're going too fast. That's the probably the first part that goes up in a flip. What we've yeah. got very little to do now, have we? This is the tail. The horizontal stabilizers and the vertical uprights. These are the vertical uprights. We took off our the name. Now, the Circus Circus is running without the horizontal stabilizer. They think it might work a little bit better. They set their um, fast disqualifying lap. What do you think? Um, I don't know if it helps. I don't know what their theory is behind it, so. There's a pipe that goes in here and back through here, and the end of the pipe is a propeller. It's what makes it run and the engine turns it. What do you want to be when you grow up, Cindy? Um, a sales person, or a lawyer, or a doctor, I'm not sure yet. I don't know much about the engines, besides it makes it go fast. And my, part, my department is just making sandwiches and making sure everybody gets their lunch.
So, and I helped my mom and my grandma do that. Yeah, we're this is Ed good. Nelson over here. He used to work on the Budweiser crew. He does a great job. What do I do? I, uh, this is Brooke. And we were already talking to him. You know Brooke, and he's a really nice guy. And this is my girlfriend. <laughs> His wife is Rita and his son is Brookie and Brookie helps a little bit on the boats. He's our team manager here, keep everything going for us. Make sure we've got our sandwiches and our fruit. <laughs> all of the all of the people in this board are pretty nice except for one exception, the Budweiser who is kind of well, I don't know, they run their own show. We stick to making sandwiches and for an example, um, Ed Cooper brought my brother and I a popsicle one day. Now the Budweiser won't do that to you. But Cindy's become a legend in her in her own way down there at the boat circuit just for her entrepreneurship and her on the ball and her enthusiasm and everything else. And I think Cindy has sort of taken over the, the limelight in the pits from our grandpa. He's following in his footsteps, a little different form, a little different thing, but uh, I think she's developing the same rapport with all the people in the pits that grandpa did when he was in his heyday. Everyone enjoyed my father in the pits. The kids were little at that time, you know, they were like six and seven. The grandchildren enjoyed him. The crew enjoyed him because he was always telling them what to do, and I think he was always right. The uh, people, the the uh, staff, which I say, the pit tour people in all the races in all the cities enjoyed for him to be uh, there because he always supplied them with cold drinks, whether it be ice water, jerky, pepperoni, and uh, it got to be a joke in one particular city that to get in the pits all you had to do is say you were grandpa's grandson. Uh, grandpa one year I think must have had 25 grandsons, right? Oh, golly. Any, any, right. Young, any young teenager that wanted to get in would say he's grandpa's grandson and feel like he would be into the pits. I got right. in good with uh, the Navy and the uh, Coast Guard. Very, very close. And the, uh, the Navy most so. So I'm getting all the credit where I shouldn't. Maybe I got a lot of BS in it. Yeah, they don't have the BS that I <laughs> This is not a wonderful vacation to go around the countryside. It's work. And it is not really a family hobby. It is really a marketing tool for Alberto Sausage Company. Uh -huh. It is not a family hobby. I would like to stress that. Now, Dorothy's always telling these guys to take their boats and make a planter box or sandbox out of them and go out and get a halfway decent job because well, there isn't a boat owner out there that isn't going in the hawk trying to keep these boats going. Uh, no, I'm not crazy about hydros. Do you really want to know what I think about them? No, I think Dorothy's true. We're eight, definitely aiding and abetting the delinquency of adults. No ifs, ands, or buts. Well, I always feel, I always tell them, in one of these days they're going to uh, either put a cement block on my foot and throw me overboard or they're going to throw a pie in my face but I always tell them to go out and get real jobs because hydroplaning is great it's a great hobby but the purse the winning purse to me is not worth I'm talking of the boat owners not the boat sponsors is not worth I think the time and effort the blood sweat and tears so to speak that they put into it. My mother and Art Alberto's mother are sisters, so that makes us first cousins. And I've been with the company about uh, 50 years. I've been coming here every year since then, you know, since he started uh, sponsoring, you know, the hydro uh, boats. Woo! <laughs>
Yeah, Alberto! Just to make the final heat. He had to make a run at it and at least try to make a start. They'd have engine problems, obviously. This is a party we've had every year for 28 years. We have employees, we have family, we have friends, we have people that just kind of happen by and see a good party and want to join us. Just have a potpourri of people. <laughs> Watch, I don't Hurry up know. before she turns over. We always say that the invitations go out. Dorothy has her party at home and Art has his party at the pits. They knew Alberta could win. They knew darn well it could win. But they still was rooting every last people on there. The Navy, the Army, the Air Force. I knew them all. They were all root for Alberta. Why do you think? Why? Uh, hospitality. He was good to everyone. Everyone knew that no matter what he, who went to that uh, trailer or uh, motorhome, that they were going to go to get something. <laughs> Even a little piece of pepperoni, a button. But you think uh, guys like Burn Lil and all like that would uh, stoop down for any kids? No way. No way. They won't have time to. Yeah. No. There's there's been a lot of people over the years that have just, I mean, gone out of their way to help put the boat races on and and take care of the people who were there and. And uh, you got a lot of dreamers and a lot of hopers and a lot of wishful uh, workers down here that they just hope to get their boats running in that there. And I think we sort of grew up to the, the have-nots and uh, probably had more fun doing it than the guys that had the big expensive budget boats. You're right on that. And that's why I'm kind of drifting away from it because I see it's just all greed, greed, greed. Art Winter for the money not for, I mean, for the money, for the joy, for the fun, and to see how many kids he can make happy. And believe me, he always come down here anytime. I bet there's over a hundred kids getting here free. He furnishes them pass. Straight for that. No, he don't care whether he wins or not. All he cares is so his boat is out and see that the people have fun. Here, who didn't get your have fun sticker here? Yeah. Well, you gotta have a have fun sticker here. You gotta have a half fun sticker. You can't enjoy life without a half fun sticker. Okay. You doing a good job in school? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get you a pen. What do you say? And then if you okay, you're gonna really study hard in school? Okay, I'll tell you what, how'd you like to have a four color pen? That way you get four times as good of grades in school as you're getting now. Okay? What do you say, I think we've been doing handing out stuff on the beach since the day we sponsored the first race here. I don't know, it's a chance to get down and see the kids and we get them stickers and poppers and stuff like that there and I forgot to give away some poppers today here but uh, normally we, it, it's just a good chance to get down and talk to the people. My mother's a neighbor of yours. Yes? Yeah. Zucker? Yeah. Who's that? Zucker? Oh, Zucker? Yes. That's your mother? That's my mother. Oh, it is? Uh -huh. hey, she's all right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, make sure you get this here. Hey, who didn't get your half fun stickers here? Thank you. Here? Well, you got to have a half fun sticker here. Not too much salt. Yeah, enough yeah, for people that can't eat yeah. salt. Oh, you just got to eat less of it. Now, with dry sausage, it's hard to make a dry sausage without salt. You know, see, in the cooked sausage, you can do that. But in the dry sausage, if you don't have the salt, it just doesn't keep, see, so. Can't enjoy the race without a half fun stick. We were handing stuff like this here out even before we ever sponsored oh, the boat. And it's just been a good gimmick, and that just sort of gives our company this crazy, loose, uh, free-for-all, uh, hey, down-to-earth type of an image, and that's what we are, and that's what we try to maintain, and that's what I enjoy doing. This is fine. Okay, yeah, this real is good. Great. Put on Thank your you. There. I will. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I probably hand out maybe three to four thousand stickers on the beach at a race. From uh, you know the beginning of the race to the end of the race. Like I, I ended up this bag here was totally, totally full of stickers. Hey, for, for you with a shirt, I'll even get you a button. You hire people to go out and do this here, but then that loses half the fun of it. I think it's a lot better and I enjoy it. And matter of fact, out of all the stuff that we do on the boat racing, we pretty well delegated everything off except hitting the beach here. And uh, I still keep that, that job there, just walking out and meeting the people and handing out stickers and looking for neat old little kids. And uh, sometimes there's handicapped kids in that there. And whatever is out there, just sort of play it by ear and go with the flow. You have fun stickers? Okay. You know, who didn't get a real good feedback? And, I, and I'll tell you one thing, we've had the best beach following 
when uh, it's a close race on here, you get on the beach here and we got everybody rooting Alberto. We've already been out and we've stickered them up, we've got them all wound up and everything, so when our boat goes out, it, actually what it does, it creates an audience, it creates a following, and, and that's really what makes our boat go, because we don't have the fastest boat. You know, who didn't get your half fun stickers? Can I please have mine? There you go. There you go. Thank you. I think we're just sort of kids oriented. Uh, I don't know, you find these little kids and they're really neat, so I, I really try to aim for the kids. And if they got adults and parents with them, I mean, we get them some stuff there too, but I, if I find some little kids that are really neat, I'll get them a pin. Or if they're really super neat or something, I'll give them a pin or something like that there. Once in a while, a kid tell me, hey, you know, I already gave me one, so I said, hey, for being honest, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you one of my stolen pins. I would say probably 10 years ago was the last year for the Albertos in the hydroplane racing. And every year is the last year for the hydroplane What's that supposed boat. to mean? It's because Dorothy's always told me, says every year, we aren't going to do this next year. If it sells salami, sausage, pepperoni, beef jerky, and provides jobs for our employees, then I guess we will continue to go around the countryside. As long as boat racing is economically feasible, we'll stay in it. Uh, if something else comes out more economically feasible, we could probably shift gears because I still look at it as a promotional deal for the good of the company. And as long as our family's having fun at it and the company's benefiting from it and the company can afford it, we'll, we'll probably stay in it forever.